The word deen refers to something mutual. It does not mean religion, which means a connection, which could be something active or could be something passive. <coughs> the word deen, which is related to Arabic words with the kind of sense of transaction or indebtedness or engagement, <coughs> means that there is give and take. And the connection that links us to the transcendent subhanahu wa ta'ala could be described as an affirmation of the heart a receptive affirmation of that which is wonderful and indicates the supernatural to the extent that that sense of beauty perfection, truth, order prevails in the heart when we perceive the world around us to that extent we are linked to reality simply to perceive the signs of the ultimate is to be connected to the ultimate. Even for those who don't have the language to express that, even the small child can have a good apprehension of the ultimate, even though it might not even be able to say the shahada. So in this famous verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shall the reward of doing what is beautiful be other than doing what is beautiful? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is... Uh, has mercy, which is qaribun min al muhsinin which is close to those who do good, who convey the beautiful, who affirm what is beautiful. And the correct way of understanding the sunnah of the chosen one, salawatullahi wa sallamu alayhi, is that it is a life lived intensely, passionately, and lyrically in response to what is beautiful. There is something about the oasis, and the oasis city of Medina, surrounded by the rigor of the desert that conjures up primordial images simply of beauty, water, trees, human beings, a simple lifestyle, the magnificence of the heavens, the grandeur of the desert and the mountains, in that place there is the direct apperception of beauty. And the human response is either to turn in on oneself and to turn in against other selves, individualism or tribalism, or it is to turn outside oneself, to affirm the other, to recognize that beauty, outward and inward beauty, which is what makes us legitimate parts of the creation of the Muhsin subhanahu wa ta'ala, call forth something from us which wishes to engage with the ultimate. Beauty is not the random concatenation of dull atoms in a sourceless and directionless universe. Beauty is something that calls us to a higher vocation that reminds us of our source and invites <coughs> us to the beauty of the eternal abode. Human beings are between two tendencies, <coughs> the tendency upwards and the tendency down, the tendency to the ruh and the tendency to the nafs. <coughs> Ugliness always in creation is the result of the engagement of the nafs. There is no other ugliness. It is to do with the mysterious possibility of human beings apparently have the, having the ability to go against the divine command, that ultimate absurdity that creates the rupture in the goodness of creation that we call ugliness. But we also have the possibility to comply with that with which we were born, which is the ruh, which is the spirit, which is min amri rabbi, which is of the command of your Lord. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he left Makkah for Medina, and found the city of Medina in the grip of uproar, individualism, <coughs> tribalism, suspicion, slander, turned to those people outwards. Instead of the introspection of the self and the tribe and the family, there was instead a radical extroversion and an affirmation of the other. And not only an affirmation of the Arabian other, there was no tribalism in the Qur'an, neither is there an affirmation of any particular Arabness. The universalism of Islam is there from the beginning. From the very moment when the girls of Bani Najjar sang at the arrival of the Prophet, saying, Tala al Badru alayna, it was to be a, a turn to the other, outwardness, neighborliness, and ultimately to be good neighbors to the world. If we are to learn from that truly, we must not revert to practices of focusing on the self, focusing on the family focusing on the tribe, or the nation, or the region, or the neighborhood, but we must try and follow in the footsteps of his breathtaking universalism. 
the justice he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wujailat li al ard masjida the whole earth has been made a mosque for me a place of prostration for me so also we recognize that what makes it a valid place in context of prostration is the possibility and the reality of the presence of beauty and the reminders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that place. Because a place where there is no remembering of Allah is not a place of beauty and is not an appropriate place for the worship of the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus begins the great caravan of the history of Islam, setting out and setting sail eastwards, westwards, north and south, and continuing until this day it is literally everywhere. All of this is from the turning outwards which is what the Holy Prophet والسلام, brought to his people. Earlier prophets are sent only to their own people, and I am sent to all mankind. But part of this, and again we see it in the seerah in Medina, is not only an open-heartedness towards the human other, and a spontaneous fitri recognition of the beauty that is in the other, even despite their sins, they still maintain something of the grandeur that is Adamic and deserve respect on that basis, but also towards other dimensions of creation. There is in the life of the Holy Prophet وسلم, as he places his blessed feet in that extraordinary soil of Taiba, of the sweet city, the place of fitra, the place of spontaneity, the place of transformation, al Madina and Munawwara. There is in it an extraordinary preternatural awareness of the sanctity of that beautiful place. One of its names is indeed Taiba, the sweet. And this is linked to one of the divine qualities. Inna Allah tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good, sweet, pure, and does only accept that which is true and good and sweet and pure. And we are required, to the extent that we are sincere in our claim to be following him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to follow him not just in his embrace of the world and his indifference to tribal and other discriminations, to recognize beauty wherever it might be, but also to recognize the possibilities of beauty not just in human beauty, inwardly and outwardly, avowedly, and admittedly, the greatest manifestation of beauty in the world, just as human ugliness, inwardly and outwardly, is the ugliest ugliness in the world. This is the miracle of human beings caught on a filament between heaven and earth. They can be the highest, but they can be asphala sefilin. The greatest beauty is in a beautiful human face or in a beautiful human action. The greatest ugliness can be in a corrupted human face or in a disease-stricken human face or in an ugly or disease-stricken human action or vice. This is where we are, poised between heaven and earth. But around us also, in the world, there are also manifestations of beauty. There are not, if we consider them correctly, manifestations of ugliness. Where we see ugliness that is not in another human being, we see it as the consequence of the actions of ugly human beings. Whether it be ugly music, or ugly architecture, or ugly fiction, or ugly clothes, or whatever it might be, it comes from the nafs, and it doesn't come from the way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designated the creation to be, which is to be the abode of pure spirits. Arwahun uh, tayyiba. Instead, it comes from human beings who have decided to look downwards, to open the trap door which leads to the infernal regions, to be excited by the energies and activity that they find there, and as a result, spread ugliness in the world. But the greatest and the most subversive ugliness is that which manifests itself in the guise of piety. That which outwardly seems to be compliant with the sunnah of the Chosen One, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but inwardly is keeping that trap door wide open into tribalism, resentment, <coughs> fear, paranoia, vengefulness, and all of those jahili traits which he came, alayhi salatu wa sallam, to sweep away. Nothing is more dangerous than the enemy within whether it be the munafiq, who saps the faith of those who understand what he is doing, whether it be the zealotry of the person who is using the language of religion in order to express his own inner ug ugliness. So in this age, where there are so many temptations, let us not assume that narrowness is the same thing as beauty, and let us instead follow always the way of the fitrah, because the heart itself craves beauty. 
human beings feel at ease in the presence of beauty in a way that they don't feel ease in the presence of ugliness. Left to their own devices, children will toddle off to see something beautiful and will run away from something ugly. And this is how we also should be. Of course, the judgments of the Sharia are there outwardly. But the soul has the right to make judgments inwardly as well. And we need, as we go through life, to make those judgments. Who is beautiful? Who is behaving in a beautiful and honorable way? What is a good and true and lyrical uh, enrichment of my experience as a human being? Let me follow that. So that if I'm with those who are in a state of ihsan, however imperfect it might be, my own ugliness might be overcome. So we need the fatwas of the ulama, but we also need the fatwa of the heart, guided and uplifted by the people of hearts, who are the people who help us to overcome the ego, to shut that infernal trapdoor, and to rise to that uh, state of mind and heart in which alone we can find true peace. By the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find peace. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people of ihsan, so that we might deserve the divine ihsan, so that we are people who contribute to making the world a garden in this life, so that the garden may, inshallah, be a place of rest in the next life. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين إنه هو الغفور الرحيم